Hello everyone and welcome to live coverage of the Elegant Design Bureau's ELO-1 mission as the flight director has declared us go for launch and the clock resumed at T-4 minutes. This is the first operational launch of the Lynx spacecraft on the Sajita rocket, both designed by the EDB and manufactured by its production division, Surestrut Industries. It is an uncrewed test of the spacecraft, which will be completely automated as it reaches orbit, retroburns, and re-enters with a splashdown close to the Hawaiian Islands. This coverage will end once orbit is confirmed and the Lynx has separated from the Sajita upper stage. Preparation of the spacecraft began at the EDB's clean room facilities in sunny Southern California with the command module and service module meticulously assembled and checked out by the best Kerbal engineers willing to work for peanuts and coffee. The Lynx was then transported to Cape Canaveral thanks to NASA's Super Guppy aircraft which stopped at Houston along the way to refuel. The Lynx is an oversized load due to its diameter and can't be transported by rail or truck as the two stages of the Sajita rocket were. Thankfully, the Lynx spacecraft can fit in the Super Guppy which can take payloads of up to 6.6 .6 meters in diameter and thus it did not have to be transported by ship which would have taken much longer and incur other hazards. It is partly cloudy at the Cape for this launch, which is a stroke of luck because there are thunderstorms due for the rest of the week. We will be launching at the start of the window, 5.03 p.m. local time here on the East Coast. But should there be any issues that require a hold at this point, there is a broad window available due to this being an experimental launch and not having to rendezvous with, for instance, the International Space Station or some other craft. However, uh, because the spacecraft does have to be recovered, uh, it will need to splash down close to recovery vessels and that means that if we do delay the launch it will have to alter its plans for re-entry but as we pass T-2 minutes hopefully those considerations are academic the Sajita rocket is a methane burning rocket carrying liquid methane and oxygen in both of its stages fueling is complete at this point the rocket is roughly 308 tons without its payload and its payload capacity to low Earth orbit is 15 tons. Its five ED-4 engines on the first stage will generate 436.7 tons of thrust off of the launch pad. We are at T-1 minute and guidance is internal. The flight computer in the Sajita upper stage is beginning its pre-launch checks. The propellant tank should now be fully pressurized in preparation for launch. Preparing to feed over a ton of propellant per second into the turbo pumps of the five first stage engines. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, ignition sequence start, 0, and launch. We have a launch of the Sajita rocket carrying the Lynx spacecraft to low Earth orbit. And the tower is clear. The booster systems engineer reports that the chamber pressures on the five engines appear to be nominal as we pass T plus 20 seconds and 1 kilometer in altitude over 130 meters per second in velocity and the flight dynamics officer is reporting that the trajectory is looking nominal we are getting good telemetry from the Sajita upper stage as well as from the Lynx spacecraft the rocket is now past Mach 1 T plus 47 seconds altitude 7 kilometers it is now passing through the region of maximum dynamic pressure and the engines will throttle down as necessary to limit dynamic pressure on the vehicle. 
engines are now back up to full throttle and we are past max Q. T plus 1 minute and 10 seconds, 16 kilometers in altitude. The rocket is now roughly 10 kilometers downrange. Sagitta is the Kerbal pronunciation of Sagitta, which is Latin for arrow, and the rocket is named after the arrow constellation Sagitta. As we pass one and a half minutes into launch, approaching 30 kilometers in altitude, past 1,000 meters per second. The Lynx spacecraft, also named after a constellation, is underfueled for this mission as it will be for all low earth orbit missions and all missions involving just a single stick Sagitta rocket as opposed to the Sagitta Heavy which has two boosters on its side. If it was fully fueled the Lynx spacecraft would be beyond the payload capacity of this rocket especially with its launch escape system. The flight dynamics officer reports that the trajectory is still nominal and telemetry is still good from both the spacecraft and the upper stage of the launch vehicle. Pressures from the engines are nominal. T plus 2 minutes and 21 seconds. We are past 66 kilometers in altitude, 2,100 meters per second. Uh, we're s switching between the simulated view and the camera views on board the spacecraft and the launch vehicle as we are nearing staging and the completion of the first stage. It has been a good burn so far. The rocket is now roughly 150 kilometers downrange, going 2,400 meters per second, roughly a third of the way to orbit, and we are 10 seconds away from first stage shutdown. And we have a shutdown and separation of the first stage, ignition of the second stage ED4 vacuum engine. Uh, it's a good nozzle extension at 100 kilometers in altitude, uh, 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the flight, and nearing 3,000 meters per second in Earth fixed velocity. The EDB Sagitta rocket has upcoming competition in the Methalox department from both SpaceX and Blue Origin, but both of those rockets will be much larger than this system. The EDB is aiming for mass production and modularity rather than reusability with this rocket system. As we had launch escape system jettison, and with the forward view we see that launch escape system is in fact away. Nearing T plus 4 minutes, 130 kilometers in altitude, 3,550 meters per second. The goal of the EDB with this and future spacecraft of its own design is a why not both philosophy, a unified architecture for the exploration of both the Moon and Mars. Uh, the EDB will be looking to contract out Sagitta launch services, of course, and a payload user's guide will be forthcoming. However, uh, the EDB is hoping to work with NASA to construct an actual Moon and Mars architecture so that if politicians change their minds, NASA doesn't have to change its hardware. We are at 4 minutes and 40 seconds, 154 kilometers in altitude, 4,460 meters per second. The rocket is now over 600 kilometers downrange. Trajectory continues to be nominal for the spacecraft's planned insertion. Upper stage chamber pressures are nominal and performance seems to be as expected. Unlike future versions of the Sagitta upper stage, this upper stage does not have built-in RCS thrusters and therefore will not be able to deorbit itself. However, uh, the insertion orbit is low enough that it should deorbit fairly quickly. The insertion orbit is roughly 210 kilometers circular. We are five and a half minutes into the launch, 177 kilometers in altitude. The ED4 vacuum engine has thrown down to limit G-forces, as it would have to for a potential crewed flight. Much like the upper stage of the Falcon 9, its thrust weight ratio can get fairly high. We are now one minute away from orbit. Keep in mind that the displayed velocity is the surface velocity and not the velocity in orbit. 
185 kilometers in altitude. 1,100 kilometers downrange. ECOM, the Electrical, Environmental, and Consumables Manager in charge of the systems aboard the Lynx spacecraft, reports that the spacecraft's uh, cabin pressure systems and electrical systems appear to be nominal. Oh, so we continue to have good communication with the spacecraft in addition to the upper stage of the rocket. Roughly 10 seconds away from orbital insertion. And we have Seco, second engine cutoff, and a somewhat early spacecraft separation. But the spacecraft has separated from the upper stage. And we're switching from the simulated view to the ground track as we will continue to monitor the Lynx spacecraft ahead of its re-entry and return. We'll end the broadcast here, but please do tune in for further news about ELO-1 and the Lynx spacecraft testing. We hope you enjoyed this coverage, and we will see you next time.